a single mother of two. My ex-husband and I take turns watching the kids month to month. My son Luke is 15 and my daughter Melissa is 10. This happened just a few months ago. I did some late night grocery shopping after work. Luke had texted me earlier that he was going out with his friends. It was a Friday night. I wasn't thrilled with him leaving Melissa alone, but 10 is the age a lot of parents are more comfortable leaving their kids alone, and he knows I can't expect him to babysit her anymore. I got back to the house around 9 o'clock at night. I had to make 3 or 4 trips from the car to the house because of the amount of groceries I bought. I always overdo it with the groceries on the months I get to watch the kids. And then on the months alone, I'm the complete opposite. When I finally finished putting all the groceries in the fridge and pantry, I went upstairs to greet Melissa. I heard the shower running in the bathroom, so I went back downstairs to lay down in the living room and put on my show on Netflix. I was halfway through an episode, and I still hadn't heard Melissa leave the bathroom upstairs. Long hot showers aren't free, and I never condone- Hold on. <laughs> Long hot showers aren't free, that's funny. But is it me? Or is it scary coming out the bathroom at night? Not like you're, you're scared to come out the bathroom, but for some reason at night, I feel like something's looking at me at night in particular when I come out the shower. I don't know, and, and it's nobody in here. <laughs> it's just me, but I just feel like something's about to happen coming out the shower at night. I don't know what it is, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments if I'm tripping or not, <laughs> okay? But yeah, just I, I get a weird feeling coming out the shower at nighttime, I don't, I don't know what it is. There to knock on the door and tell her to get out of the shower soon. I went back downstairs to resume my show. Only for about five minutes though, Melissa was still in the shower. So I went back up there again and knocked louder. This time I waited for her to acknowledge me. But when she didn't, I continued to knock louder and yell her name angrily. Hey, it took me a money. little bit to notice through the bottom crack of the door that the light was off in the bathroom. I tried the doorknob, but the door was locked. The locks on my doors inside the house are easily unlocked with a fingernail though, so I had to force my way in, now growing concerned. As the door opened, I yelled into the room at my daughter, at that moment feeling more furious than anything. I flicked the light switch up and went over to the tub. I yanked the curtain half open, honestly not knowing what to expect, but not in my worst nightmare would I have expected to find some 50-something year old withered looking woman laying flat in the bathtub with the shower spraying water onto her. I screamed so loud and long until I lost the ability to scream for a few seconds. I had my back pressed up to the mirror. Everything on the counter had fallen to the ground. I felt an unexplainable sense of shock and horror. The woman stood up in the tub looking at me, her hair and clothes obviously drenched. I slammed the bathroom door shut and screamed Melissa's name. I checked her room first thing and I found her hiding under the covers. I grabbed her and tugged her out of the room. As we passed the bathroom door towards the stairs, that woman was standing in the doorway of the bathroom. Everything about her looked like a zombie, her eyes, her movement. I made sure to grab my cell phone before locking the two of us in the spare room in the basement. I called the police, and as I waited for the police to come, Melissa told me she thought it was me who came into the house, but when she saw some random scary looking woman walking up the stairs, she ran to her room to hide. Luke left the front door unlocked when he left. The police showed up in a timely manner. I talked to the police and told them exactly what Melissa told me. I described the woman's appearance, noting she was also soaked and because of that I couldn't give a good description of her hair besides long and graying. This was all after making sure the woman was no longer in the house. Not under a bed, not in a closet, not behind a shower curtain. She simply left the house as easily as she entered. It's likely she was drugged out of her mind. I'd never seen someone who looked like they were literally lacking consciousness yet still walking. I don't even know if I would have been able to press any charges on her if she was found, which she wasn't. Now you ain't finding her. I properly stole she is gone. She gone. Always remember to lock your doors. Yeah, hey, y'all gotta lock y'all doors out here, man. You guys gotta lock the doors, make sure. See, my older brother does a good job at that. He always makes sure all right, the doors are locked all around this, all around the house. Check them, shake them, you know, do, do, make sure it's locked. So, yeah, make sure your door's locked out here. Don't be messing around for getting the check, because that could be your neck, okay? <laughs> Rhyming purposes, okay? I do this. <laughs> but no, then, yeah, see, seriously though, we gotta lock our doors. We gotta make sure we're properly se securing ourselves when we, you know, before we go to sleep, because something like that could happen. And it's very easy these days, you know, to 
just go around and, and, and act stupid. So lock your doors. So let's say you have to read an incredibly long email from your boss that you have to finish before the big meeting. This was over 15 years ago. We once went to this family resort in New York State. We took our two kids who were four and six at the time. Dad, don't look at no resort. This focuses that looks on like our six-year-old six Michael Jr. An apartment. We were on vacation around Easter time, so the resort had a bunch of fun little festivities. If that's a resort kids, though, you get your money back. Months, Easter decorations during bingo, and someone walking around in a big Easter bunny costume. While we were in the dining hall one evening, the Easter bunny was walking around giving kids high fives. When he came over to our table, our four-year-old Peter hid under the table crying, but Michael Jr. gave him the high five and wasn't afraid at all. The guy in the bunny suit walked away quickly, probably to get our son to stop crying. The next day, there was an Easter egg hunt, which was in one of the fields by the kids' center of the resort. I watched the kids scrambling to collect eggs while my husband Mike was elsewhere. I'm not really sure what he was doing. The Easter bunny guy was walking around the field interacting with the kids. I noticed he knew to avoid Peter. Peter came running to me when the Easter Bunny got near to him. He would do the same thing with Santa around the holidays. The guy in the bunny suit was interacting with Michael a lot. I found it kind of cute. I just didn't want Peter around him so that he wouldn't start crying again. So I brought him to the other side of the play area for a little while. When it looked like the Easter Bunny was gone, I walked him back to where Michael Jr. was last. But I couldn't see him. I started calling his name. Then another parent came up to me and asked if I was looking for a boy wearing a red sweater. I said yes, and she told me the guy in the Easter Bunny costume walked him out of the field area in the direction of the parking lots. She told me this in a slightly concerned sounding tone. I picked up Peter and ran in the direction that the woman pointed. I ran faster than I ever could, while holding my son on top of it. Motherly instincts clearly kicking in giving me an adrenaline boost. I saw the man in the Easter Bunny costume holding my child's hand, approaching a black car. I screamed at the top of my lungs at him to get away from my son, then I screamed Michael's name. They both turned to look at us, and the man let go of my son's hand. Michael ran over to me, not realizing at all the danger he was just in. Goodness gracious. The man in the costume said to me that he was trying to find his mom since he looked lost, but that was total BS. He was about to get in his car with my six-year-old son. I tried to yank the mask off of him, but he shoved me and yelled at me to piss off. Then he got in his car and drove away. I tried to remember his plate number, but he was gone too quickly. Bro, that guy would've got popped. He would've got popped, man. He would've got popped in his crotch. What are you doing with a six? See? 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 Sometimes kids know, man. Some, some, sometimes kids could, kids could feel negative energy, you know? I don't know, yeah, but 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 kids could feel the the negative energy, like I'm uh, yeah, because I could remember back when I was small, <clears throat> there were some people that would come around me, and I'm like, bro, some about this lady is very scary, like very dark. I could feel different energy, like you know, like it goes negative or positive. You know, some some people you you'll be around, you'll feel happy, and then some people you'll be around, you'll feel like something's not right I think kids have a good sense of that I think they have a good sense of that because I remember doing that back in the day or having those senses back in the day so Peter he was he he was he was here you know Peter was here with his but but Michael a little older so he he was just thinking about playing and he was kind of off a little bit I don't know but that's crazy man I would I would because I'm just thinking about like my family like the little ones in my family Bro, you're not gonna get away scotch free. Like I might, I might have to, I might have to put hands on you, man. I might have to put hands on you. This is no lie. It's, it's, it's serious. Y'all, y'all drop in the comments, man. What you guys will do in that situation, man? Because pretty much, like when I see people do stuff to kids, it's, it's different. That'll make you turn into a super sad. I called my husband on my old archaic cell phone and I brought my kids to the front desk of the resort to meet him there. They said the man in the Easter Bunny costume didn't work there. I was livid, yelling at the front desk workers the whole time, who were apparently aware of the man, yet didn't stop him or question him. 
We threatened to sue the entire place. They ended up refunding us for our entire stay, which we gladly accepted. But I was mere seconds away from losing my kid forever. That's crazy. What do you mean he don't work there and y'all knew he didn't work there? Stop spending so much on Apple. Me? We adopted our son Charlie at the age of two. He's aware that he was adopted. We were honest with him about that ever since he started to learn to speak. He's now seven years old. We don't have any children of our own because my wife can't have kids. Somewhat recently, my wife and I started noticing- Yo, son, something tells me this kid is strange already. Like, something tells me this kid is gonna do something weird. Very strange behavior with Charlie. And what motivated me to actually sit down and write this was something my Charlie wife- Charlie bit me! There's an upstairs toy room for Charlie since there's two extra bedrooms in our house. He has a big toy closet in there and the whole room has a bunch of toys like a Lego table, action figures, and such. For the duration of about a month, at different times we'd hear Charlie talking to himself. Not like role-playing talking in his play, we'd overhear him speaking as if he were talking to another person in the room. Ah! Uh, Charlie! Charlie, who are you talking to? Who the heck? Are you talking to Charlie? Huh? Bro. Bro, 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 bro. Charlie. Come on, man. Where did y'all get Charlie from, man? The first time this happened, my wife wasn't home. But as I passed his playroom, I overheard him talking as if he had a friend in there. And I swear to God, I actually walked in just to make sure he didn't actually have a friend in there. That's scary. When I walked in, I saw him sitting at his Lego table with a couple of his WWE action figures on top of it. But he wasn't currently playing with any of them. Hold on, hold on. What would you guys do if you saw or heard a kid talking to himself like somebody was there in the room with him? What would you guys do? Like, will <laughs> him? Because I'm just thinking, I'm like... Either somebody really is there that I can't see is hiding somewhere, or he's seeing some kind of like spirit or something. Cause that's just uncomfortable. That'll scare me. I'm not gonna lie. I, I I'll question. I'll question what is really going on. You know, I'll be concerned. He was just sitting there blankly staring at me. I asked, "Who are you talking to?" He shrugged his shoulders. As weird as it was, I had to assume he was just playing. The next time something strange happened, it was a lot worse. This time, my wife was at least home to witness it with me. We were in the kitchen, Charlie was in the backyard playing. We heard him laughing and talking suddenly, so my wife went to look out the window to see what he was doing. Then she called me over to look as well. What we saw was Charlie talking to thin air, as if he were talking to a person. It resembled him trying to show someone who wasn't there how to use the plastic sword in his hand. I expressed to my wife my concern. She said he may just have an imaginary friend. Nah, I bro. I didn't know how I felt about that. She seemed to feel it was completely normal. Heck no. Fast forward to like the third or fourth instance. It was nice. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Bro, man. <clears throat> I know kids, we all know kids do imaginary friends, but how far do they take it? They don't take it as if somebody's literally right there. Wait, I mean, I mean, kind of they do, but. But there's a level to it. You know, you can tell, but. This one sounds like he's really seeing something that we can't see. That is, that is... <sighs> Nine o'clock on a school night, approaching Charlie's bedtime. He was in his playroom still. I was trying to be lenient with the bedtime and let him play for a few more minutes. I heard Charlie laughing and talking to his imaginary friend again. I curiously had to take a peek into the room. As I opened Charlie's door, I heard his closet door shut. I looked at Charlie, standing up in the dead center of the room, with his toys scattered around him. I asked him who was in the closet, and something on the inside of it fell. It sounded like a big plastic toy. I asked one more time who was in the closet in a yell. He said George. I swung the door open, expecting one of his little friends in there. Maybe my wife let him have a playdate or sleepover without telling me. But the closet was empty besides his toys. I picked Charlie up against his will and brought him to his room. I told him he was going to bed. Then I told my wife about the closet door closing on its own, and then the toy inside falling on its own. She thought I was messing with her at first, but then she saw I was serious. 
Hold on, but did you check the closet though? Oh, I think he said nobody was in there. That night, I woke up to sounds from down the hall in Charlie's playroom. We sleep with the door open. I woke my wife and told her to follow me quietly. We tiptoed to the toy room. Charlie wasn't in there, but a distinct, loud clicking sound was coming from inside the toy closet. I opened it, showing bravery for my wife, and as I did, the clicking stopped. We dug for any kind of electric toys that may have made that clicking sound. Nothing, though. I think that was the night I became a believer in the paranormal. The next morning, I woke to my wife's scream. She was holding our wedding photo. It was cracked right down the middle, not just the picture in the glass, but the frame too. It was cracked perfectly down the middle, separating the two of us. We took Charlie and stayed with my mom for a week. Then, after a week, my wife and I returned to the house. We listed the house for sale, and after a few days of normalcy, we brought Charlie back to the house. But we moved out a month later. Bro, y'all need to get rid of Charlie! Dog the house as long as y'all have Charlie. I don't know what Charlie's into, but who Charlie it, bro, get rid of Charlie. Don't get rid of the bro. But actually get rid of the house too. What the heck? Okay? Charlie. Charlie definitely is into is is he's into that stuff. Okay? Charlie is into that stuff, son. He opened the closet and he didn't see nobody in there? Ah I would get the chills. I right right now I'm kinda I'm, I'm kinda getting the chills a little bit. But bro, I would get the chills in that moment, like to hear something and then you don't see what's there. That's crazy. That's some movie theater stuff. Uh, let me let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It's free. It's at the TV. Catch you guys next video. Bye.